persons. I call the member for Maitland. Thank you, Mr Acting Speaker. Earlier this week I spoke on the issue of palliative care and I uh, welcome and note the interest of those in the gallery who are here today to bear witness to this petition which has attracted more than 83 signatures from people across the state in support of funding for the vital area of uh, palliative care. And I want to pay particular tribute to Dr Yvonne McMaster who instigated this petition and is a key campaigner in this area. And I also acknowledge the efforts of the Cancer Council, particularly Sally Keir and Shane Connell from The Hunter, who have been strong advocates with me on this issue. Palliative care is one of the most important and yet unrecognised areas of health care. We spend so much time planning on how we are going to live our lives, yet we spend far less on how we will embrace our death. It is ironic in one sense as no one knows how long we will walk this earth, but we know we will all inevitably experience death. We are reluctant to discuss our death with our families and loved ones, and yet preparation for this difficult time can make a huge difference to the impact of our passing um, has on the lives of those we love. With research showing that medical advances mean far fewer of us will die a sudden death, this conversation about how we spend those last days, weeks and sometimes months must cover how we are looked after. 70% of people want to die at home, surrounded by their loved ones, in a safe and comforting place and unfortunately only 14% of us get the opportunity to do so. In my electorate of Maitland and nearby Dungog, there are 79 individuals currently receiving palliative care so that they too, like the minister's friend, can die with dignity and surrounded by love at home with their families. On Monday, the Maitland Mercury ran a front page story on the restrictions of our local palliative care service due to a lack of funding by the New South Wales government. Fiona Murphy of Rutherford was diagnosed with terminal cancer and only given weeks to live. Her only wish was to die at home, surrounded by her family. Now, between 8.30am and 5pm, palliative care nurses could provide Fiona with pain relief, but due to a lack of government funding, this care was stopped at 5pm. And this meant, of course, that Fiona suffered discomfort and pain during the night. With no palliative care nurses available, she was unable to be administered significant pain relief to help her. No one should have to experience this. A month ago, I made an urgent representation to the Minister for Health after I was contacted by another woman in my community whose father receives palliative care. She too was distressed and agitated due to the lack of 24-hour palliative care services available, and her father too suffered unimaginable pain and discomfort during the night. All this woman asked for was more funding and to ensure more nurses are on the ground. To date, I haven't received a response to my representations, not even an acknowledgement. Not even if I, after I raised this in the parliament earlier this week, and not even after the Murphy family raised their concerns in our local paper. The minister needs to listen to our communities and she needs to act urgently. Our local palliative care service is short-staffed and stretched to the limit. More government funding is needed. I find it appalling that we don't have palliative care nursing positions filled as this places more stress on the rest of the palliative care team. However, Hunter New England, uh, Lower Health, uh, Hunter New England Lower Hunter Health Sector Manager Lynn Bickerstaff has admitted that two of our nursing positions were unfunded. She's also recognised the need for a 24-hour service and if, as the Minister says, these decisions are up to the local health districts, why haven't they been funded? Fiona Murphy's last wish was to die at home, surrounded by her family in a dignified way without pain. Only a 24-hour palliative care service would have guaranteed this, and we must ensure that no one else has to suffer like this in their last days. Families who provide palliative care pay a huge emotional, physical and financial price to give people like Fiona Murphy a dignified death and in the process they save our hospital system money and free up beds for those who will recover from their illnesses and injuries. We all have a responsibility as representatives of our communities to fight for vital services. Individuals, families and professionals are calling out for more funding. I urge the Minister to help our communities across the state by funding proper palliative care. Thank you. Thank you.